Alrighty guys, welcome back in indeed to more Path of Exile. So in this video, I will be dropping a lot of mechanics. If you do not fully understand any of these, please don't feel afraid to ask in the comment section below if you are confused on any of these mechanics as these are all going to be important things and this video is going to show off a lot of newer things. So the first thing I want to start off the video with is show off the new Hydrosphere and the interactions that you can actually use to generate rage as some boss fights, if you guys are uh, playing the same class that I am, the same ascendancy with the Berserker, you'll notice sometimes when you are waiting for, like, let's say the boss to start fighting, um, you'll just start degenerating rage, which will also drain your health. And in order to keep that up, you can do a few different things. And this is one way you can do it. It's using a new skill. As I mentioned before, I want to try out all the new skills when there's a new league. Now, Everything is optional uh, in terms of like learning this mechanic, but it can help out and I'm going to go show you guys it. But the first thing I want to go and actually show you guys is the Maven Encounter. So this is something new to the Ritual League. You might have seen these as a drop if you enabled the uh, Maven to watch some of your um, encounters at the boss. So if this is not enabled, at this point I would say it's good just to enable it. Um, it will make the bosses harder on the maps, but it will give you a benefit to get these um, invitations. So what's going to happen is you'll do a map and if this is enabled, um, the Maven will watch you fight the boss. She will make the boss harder just as a heads up, but it will allow them to basically um, give you the invitation to go fight the boss again. So what we're going to do at the start of this is I'm going to show you guys the boss encounter for the Maven's fight and kind of the basic mechanics of it. This one's going to be a relatively low tier one, so it should be very easy. Um, but there's still a lot of mechanics that I do want to show off. So we're going to go and open up the Maven's Crucible. Now, I also want to show you guys this really cool way to generate rage without actually having any monsters to attack, which is really good um, because the Maven's encounter, how it works is you basically will be starting off with a zero rage and that's not going to be good for DPS. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do is actually build up my rage and what I'm going to do to build up my rage um, is actually use one of the new skills, Hydrosphere, as well as Chainhook. I just purchased these gems um, from the Oriath, which I can show off after. Uh, I just want to show you guys the mechanic in case any of you guys do want to uh, engage in it. But anyways, Hydrosphere over here, it just throws down this little ball, and then we can start hitting the ball, and we can start doing things with it. It's kind of utilized for other classes, um, but you can still benefit off of generating rage. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to generate rage, and I'm going to have to have specifically, depending on what weapon type that you have, um, it may uh, differ as I am uh, using a two-handed axe, which does not work with uh, the... Uh, ability chain hook it requires us to use a one-handed mace scepter uh, sword or axe so i have this uh, as my uh, swappable weapon this is only important for the maven encounter because i don't want to start off with zero rage when i engage and over on the top left you can see my rage still building up and then I, what i can do is weapon swap and then i will be able to actually uh, deal with the uh the boss mechanic i'm going to throw up all my uh, other buffs and i'll mention all the other changes uh, but I'll, I'll first we'll kill the boss but now I'll, I'll be able to start the fight with a bunch of rage, which is very, very nice. We're also using a new war cry, and I'll explain all these things, but I wanted to start off with the, the newer content here and show you the mechanic of upgrading the um, different map modifiers that you'll see. So this one is relatively easy. These can be a little bit more difficult. I just saved this one because got some chisels off but nice be careful with the maven though because after you killed the bosses sometimes she'll just hit you um so just be ready to to pop a potion even if you've killed everything she's a little bit of a cheater over there <laughs> but uh, now that we've uh, defeated the boss this is the maven's gift this will allocate passive points on the atlas so you'll see i have now have two points on the atlas so if I click on the certain region, you'll see where it says, and has little like watch stones. I now have two extra points. I've already put two points into the harvest one. I really recommend most of you guys to invest into harvest. Harvest and uh, delirium are what I would consider it the most friendly and most uh, plentiful in terms of like your rewards for most players. I mean, it all depends on what mechanic you enjoy the most and I'll show you guys what Harvest is in a moment, but I wanted to start off this video with something kind of exciting, which is the multiple boss fights. Uh, later on, it will get a lot more difficult, but 
basically we can select over here with our points. Um, do I want to do breaches? Those are the things where we, we touch and then um, there's basically a little circle that kind of uh, outward expands. Um, and if you enjoy doing the mines, the Nico missions are available as well. This one says harvest and areas have double bonuses for item quantity and rarity. I'm going to go for the harvest. Um, so this one over here is for uh, up to 20 rare monsters and areas are possessed and their minions are touched. That can have uh, different drop results. But for me, I'm all about the harvest. So I'm going to put everything into harvest uh, as much as I can. So that's what I want to do. Do what you want to do. If you want my recommendation, I would sel uh, select um, harvest as well. But pretty much that's like the uh, end game. Well, this is one of the forms of end game mechanics that is new. Um, and I'm just showing you guys it right now. Uh, you can definitely participated in a lot uh, earlier when you are progressing. But I've made a lot of changes to the uh, character build, so uh, I want to go ahead and go over a lot of newer mechanics. And the most important thing with this part of our uh, examples and playthrough is really, if you are confused on anything, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to uh, help you out as this is something you do definitely need to learn. So first off, the crafting bench over here. Um, all you would need to do if you want to go ahead and place it, I think we've uh, talked about it before, uh, but there's a lot of other decorations and you can completely change the way that uh, this is oriented. Like you can, I can move it anywhere over here. I can change the rotation of it, just the looks of it. It's just for aesthetics. Uh, but the most important thing is, is basically modifying items. This is something that is really cool. Sometimes items, you can remove things with a null orb. That's a little bit more advanced and I'll get into that later when we really get into crafting but the most important thing is um, and I'll explain how to unlock more of these in just a second it has to do with these little like alien texts that you will unveil but basically yeah just crafting in this game um, is quite important to uh, learn at some point uh, as if you don't want to participate in trading you will like have to do it but for me personally I usually just end up trading because there is some risk to this where I could just go buy the item. Sometimes it's cheaper just to buy the item with the stats that you want versus trying to roll it because some of these can get quite pricey, especially if you want to roll multiple different times. But in addition to that, there are jewels. And we've kind of already gone over jewels, but there's these things called the uh, abyss mechanic, and they will drop these uh, jewels that can be inserted into items um, if they happen to have what's called an abyssal socket. That's something I haven't really explained, but it's pretty simple. You just throw it in, and then now I can go ahead and equip it. Um, nothing too big with that, but it is a mechanic that I figured I'd explain. I also want to go over a few uh, crafting recipes. This is just really easy uh, for any of you guys that are running out maybe of your like portal scrolls or your scrolls of wisdom. If I use orbs of alteration or transmutation, I can get a bunch of scrolls of wisdom. I can then take those scrolls of wisdom Go right back into Oriath, which is again where you can also purchase the Hydrosphere as well as the Hook uh, gem that I showed off to build the Rage. It's mostly a mechanic that I really only use for certain boss fights where the boss mechanic is like they go away off screen for like a set amount of time, then I'll just still build up my Rage. But specifically for the Maven encounter, because I will have zero Rage at the start, as this build definitely benefits off of Rage. That's the only time I'm really using it, but I figured I'd show you guys the new skill uh, over here. So if we go to, um, actually it's Lani over here. If we want to purchase uh, portal scrolls, it costs three scrolls of wisdom. So that's like the currency exchange. In fact, if you guys don't want to deal with people in terms of trading, um, this is an excellent way to go ahead and swap different currencies. Sometimes it can be better uh, deal to just go to a player it's just how it is but um yeah you can definitely use this to your advantage over here if you want to uh, still obtain uh different forms of currency like you're running low on one just use this it, it does make things easier because a lot of times with trade as you guys know people don't respond but if you want to buy all the gems uh, again the one i, I purchased was called hydrosphere uh, we've made a few changes up to the build and i want to show you guys it just in case any of you guys want to follow along a little bit with it but by all means you do not have to follow it it's just um some recommendations that I can uh, provide for you guys. So in terms of the tree, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up really quick. And um, we actually did do the last ascendancy and you'll encounter these uh, as you just complete maps. You'll see that there's other trials, which I'll show off in a moment here. But if you really want just to just copy the tree, I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, again, in part one, we did have the path of building there. And I also wanna mention, now that you've like progressed in the game and you're like, more than likely at this point you've spent several hours into the game 
If you want to download a loop filter, now is definitely a, a good time to uh, either change the loop filter that you have to make it a little bit more strict because you don't want certain items to go ahead and appear as drops. You can do that. Um, I might make a dedicated video for this, especially for beginners, as it's a little bit complex. Um, I'll try to find a link uh, for like a, someone else's uh, like tutorial that's relatively easy. Or like I said, I'll just end up making like uh, my own one because there is a lot to loop filters, but. That is something just to keep in the back of your mind. If you want to use loop filters, this is an excellent, uh, again, time to do so because there's just going to be so many drops that you're just like overwhelmed on the screen uh, as you progress. But um, I haven't really made too many uh, insane changes to where the build is completely different other than I did put in a, a few different jewels. Um, what I'm trying to prioritize specifically is getting all attribute and increased maximum life. And then if I can get something else that benefits my class or the, the build that I'm going for, this is like extra damage with two hand weapon. Weapons. This one is uh, more two-handed weapons, but I'm really just looking for all attributes uh, as I needed some more intelligence and dexterity to meet the requirements for certain pieces of gear. But uh, you guys can still definitely use like the sword that I was using before, like the Terminus S. It's still like viable. You can still kind of uh, base it around crit if you want to. Um, but uh, I went with Kaom's Primacy, which grants me extra um, physical as extra fire damage per rage. And I'm trying to get this six link right now. Obviously, it's still not six link, but you know it takes some time with that. And I might uh, use a bunch of my currency to try to get this to six link eventually. But right now, I'm using this uh, armor here. I got it for 50 chaos, which is actually a pretty good deal. It happened to roll uh, pretty good on the life department. It was just that it granted a, a huge amount of base flat armor and evasion rating. And then on top of that, it can go up to 100 uh, life and also increase recovery per second from life leech. So that's extra survivability. Again, it was just something else that I wanted as my older armor uh, just was kind of getting outclassed. If you feel like you're dying too often, definitely swap out your Abyssius if you still feel like your damage is really good. Abyssius is a huge reason why you might be dying a lot. And a lot of people um, that really want to push for DPS to keep it on, but it is a little bit risky as you will be climbing up in the map tier. Uh, it does become a little bit more uh, difficult and you just don't really want to die. If I can get my Kaoms, I would swap. Well, I actually have a Kaoms Heart, which is another item I'll recommend. And I'll show you guys that mechanic um, of Kaoms Heart, which is another good item. Again, you can go purchase it and I'll show you what it does. Uh, it just grants you a massive amount of life, but it has no sockets. Once we get this to six link, um, because I can scale fire damage, Kaoms will be actually okay to swap. Uh, for some extra bonus damage. I'm running Crown of the Inward Eye. Um, the reason why I'm running it, I saw it for sale that it had increased cyclone damage and it was relatively cheap. Sometimes when there's good deals, I'll buy it even though it might not be like the best. It's just because I want to actually resell it later on <laughs> uh, so I can make a profit. But this is Crown of the Inward Eye. It grants us uh, Transfiguration of Soul, Body, and Mind. What that does is increases our damage at one third of the value of plus maximum health. So if we have, let's say, um, 100 to uh you know maximum life so like any of those maximum life i'm getting it at uh 30 percent of the value in bonus damage that's what this does that's the only one that really matters there's other benefits but i don't want to make this video longer than necessary uh but that's the main thing that i'm using for this and on top of that we get increased um cyclone damage and it does give us increased maximum life mana and global energy shield but abyssius is still a great option um or sarconjus which is something we've mentioned before um, now I am running Cyclone as a primary skill. I feel like I still want to eventually do the uh, Paradoxia, which is like what I showed off in Path of Building uh, in like the link of the, like, the very, very first video. It's just sometimes when you want to get to the end game build, you will have to run other skills. You might do other things differently. Uh, but this is what I'm currently running. I'm running Cyclone. Speaking of like all my gems, I actually purchased a bunch of, uh, they're, all my gems at this point are 23% quality. What I did, and this is uh, something you guys can do as well, because a lot of the Ritual League mechanic, uh, a lot of the things are granting uh, huge quality gems, like insane amounts, and you could, people are just getting them and they're selling them for what I would consider relatively cheap. Um, if you want to, you can get a gem to level 20, then you go to the vendor and then you sell it to them. This is level 19 and it's 20 quality, so it's going to give me something different. But if I put this in here, it will give me a gem cutter's prism. This will upgrade the quality, which we went over before. But if you get a gem that has 20 quality, sometimes in instead of just selling it to the vendor, you can just sell it on the trade website and get, let's say, like, it depends on the gem, but you can get anywhere from, like, let's say, like, 5 to maybe a 10 chaos, depending on what the gem is. If it's Awaken, this is worth way, way, way more. But um, you're, at this point, you probably haven't gotten one of those yet. Um, but... 
I can get one gem cutter's prism for a uh, gem. If you don't want to deal with trading, I guess this could be an option. So you get a 20 quality. But if this is level 20, and not quality 20, but level 20, I can make it become uh, maxed out on the quality and um, it will reset the level of the gem to one. So I will then have to re-level up the gem. But because in this ritual league, um, it's just easier. And I would recommend this for any of you guys that maybe want to, and you have a lot of currency, I would just buy them all at 23%, uh, just because it's very easy uh, to get. I, I got all of these. The most of these were like five to 10 chaos. Just you got to look at the timing uh, sometimes of like, you know, people selling stuff. But this is what I'm currently running for my setup in terms of our uh, build. We're running Cyclone. I'm running Infused Channeling Support. We're running Melee Physical Damage Support. I'm running Rage Support because, again, with this new Ritual League, the uh, Berserker got the update with plus 10 Rage. So I'm trying to test out, you know, how good this is with it. And then I'm also running Fortify. This grants us extra uh, damage reduction before we had it on our helm. But... Um, uh, when we were doing like leap slam uh, and then we're also running impale because impale is amazing um in terms of the gloves uh, i just got something that had a implicit that's uh something when you vault orbit um, it can roll to get increased maximum life do i recommend vault orbiting your stuff probably not uh unless you really want to push your luck i'm just trying to grant myself uh, some extra bonus life uh over here and this having to roll good life Really look out for that chaos resistance. Uh, I mentioned before, Ming's Heart, really cheap item, like one chaos. Um, it does reduce your max life, but it grants you extra damage. And since I'm running this, hey, it kind of works with it because we get bonus chaos damage. Anyways, I'm getting uh, physical damage as extra chaos damage. So that's kind of nice. Um, nothing too fancy with uh, the, the boots. It's just, um, I think we've been running the same boots for a while. Maybe we can get an upgrade eventually. Uh, and then on top of that, um, I'm running a Fangjaw Talisman. So before I was running the one that would grant us crit, if I was running sword, crit is good. Uh, but the thing is, is that this axe is flat, crit chance is so low that increasing the extra crit, um, it's a little bit more rough. Like the um, sword rolls like up to 8.75 for the tiger sword in terms of the crit strike chance at being max. Um, so basically with the axe, it's almost like half. So getting crit, it still can be okay, but I'm just gonna mention that it's rough. One thing I also want to mention that is really cool to have um, on something, you can have your golem, like I have my golem right here um, in one of these sockets, but what you can do is also buy a support gem uh, that has cooling strike. What cooling strike does is when the monster, actually if I hold alt, will it tell me? Uh, here we, oh yeah, perfect. So it says cooling strike means that enemies uh, that are on 10% or lower life after you're hit are killed. What that allows you to do is, no matter how bad your golem's damage is or your ancestral war chief is, even if it hits for like one damage, as long as they're at 10% or under, it just one shots them. So once they get to 10% uh, like HP, it's just bam, they're gone. It, it really is a nice feature to have. Um, but I don't need to have it because this weapon happens to have it. This weapon is super cheap, by the way. It's like a one chaos. Um, if you want to get a six link, well, there's probably none for sale because no one really wants to bother six linking this thing. Although I do because I want to try it out. Um, but there's really nothing too new other than um, in our flasks over here. Um, I, I have qualified up some stuff. So right now, since we're getting pretty much towards the very end of the game in terms of like our, our character, we really want to try to build it up. We want to start qualitying everything. I mentioned the gems already. I just showed you guys how to quality up using just the armor scrap as well as the whetstones. You want to start min-maxing everything right now. And there's so many other forms of currency uh, that I will have to like show you guys the ins and outs of. But anyways, the most important thing is just getting everything as high as you can. Um, that it would be like, for example, the armor scrap is a very cheap currency. I wouldn't recommend using all your gem cutters prism on your gems unless, I just, yeah, I, at this point, because it's so easy to get the corrupted gems at like really high quality, I would probably recommend for most of you guys, um, unless you don't want to deal with people trading, to sell these for chaos because they're worth quite a bit right now. Um, it's just because, again, you can get a lot of these for a lot cheaper at just make. 23 quality for like 5 to 10 chaos. It's just much more of a benefit than quality them up via using this. But as far as the glass uh, blower's bobble, you also can quality up your flasks. This will increase most of the, the numbers in uh, blue. So most of them will be like increased duration, for example. Lion's Roar, which I recommend most of you guys to get anyways. Um, I'm just going to show you guys what happens if we quality it up. I'm going to go ahead and exit the, the cell screen. So I'm just going to quality it up and you will see that the uh, the last like 4.3 seconds if i just keep on putting quality uh, you can go up to 20 on your flasks uh, and it'll just increase the duration try to get everything 
towards max. And in fact, I'm going to probably drop Dodgers at this point. It's just a great starter, like, you know, beginner item that's really cheap um, and lets you get a lot of stats. But at this point, since I'm not really scaling crit, even though getting frenzy charges and power charges, like, they're all great to have at the end of the day. Um, what I did do for my endurance charges um, is I was originally running endurance charge, and you could still do it if you want to run leap slam to get endurance charge on stun as a red support gem. Again, go back to uh, Oria, you can purchase that. I'm running Enduring Cry, which is something new and I haven't talked about, um, but there is something important if you want to run what's called a War Cry. There's one node over here called Call to Arms, and since uh, this is like an okay area to go to anyways, as I did grab uh, the extra uh, radius, or it's an increased area effect for my Cyclone, which increases the size of it, and it grants us extra melee strike range, which increases the size of our little spin attack over here, as this is the main one that I'm currently using. Uh, I do still, again, want to go back to Flicker Strike, but it's going to be later down the line, as I do want a lot more things here, it's because Feral's Fur is a very expensive item. <laughs> But um, anyways, uh, grabbing this thing over here makes Warcry's instant, um, so you don't actually have a cast animation. Usually when you use a Warcry, what happens is your character goes, Whoa! and he'll like, you know, do the animation. But now I can, I can do a Whirlwind and do uh, Enduring Cry. Uh, Enduring Cry is almost like another potion, but it grants us a buff. So, uh, for example, if I'm spinning here, I can still do my Warcry. I don't have to stop while doing it. So that's a huge benefit. So what does this thing do? Let me actually uh, hover over it. So Enduring Cry over here is a gem, and you can run um, other support gems with it, uh, like Second Wind is actually really good, so it gives you more charges of it. Uh, I just don't have the room on my build, but if you do, it's excellent. So Enduring Cry, what it does let you do is it has a base duration of two seconds. Uh, it gives you a huge amount of life regeneration over like one second, so it's like a basically another potion here. Um, and on top of that, how a War Cry works is depending on the amount of enemies and the type of enemies, meaning if it's a boss, you'll get like more power on it. Um, I wish they kind of explained this a little better. Actually, do they, if I hold all? Oh, here we go. So normal monsters have one power, magic monsters have two, rare monsters have 10, unique monsters 20, and players five. So depending on the amount of like enemies around you, you'll get more of a benefit from it. So that benefit would be you gain one endurance charge per five power, the buff grants two plus two to all Ellie resistance and two additional physical damage reduction. That's what I really want is that physical damage reduction. In fact, I actually am thinking about Arctic Armor and I'm thinking about going back to Abyssius as Abyssius is absolutely amazing but because i happen to have this increased our cyclone damage i'm going to use this for now um, but this this item can be very expensive to get the cyclone damage or cyclone attack speed modifier on your helmet as an enchant as it's something in the lab which we will show off later but there's just again there's so much content to cover in this video uh but the next thing I want to show you guys is these cluster jewels. You might have seen some of these and how these work is you have to be on a large cluster jewel and what you can do is you can put these in and it's going to extend your tree and build your tree even further. So there are things that aren't even on the tree. Like you'd have to like literally look this up in PoE Wiki uh, where it will grant you an additional skill that's just not in the game. It's really, really cool uh, as far as the mechanic goes. But uh, I would say at this point... Um, you probably have some extra currency if you've been kind of following the guide. Uh, what I recommend you guys to do is definitely upgrade your amulet. Check out what is available. I happen to get four shaper on this, but what I'm looking really for right now, if I'm still running the sword build, crit is still definitely great. But uh, I went and just got a Fang Jaw because the Fang Jaw Talisman will always allocate uh, 8 to 12% uh, life. And this one rolled 11%, and then it rolled pretty good stats. Uh, make sure you, you guys still have your resistances relatively high, especially. Like right now I have mine what's considered overcap, so if there's like minus like 8% or something, I'm like I'm, I'm still like okay. Um, but in addition to that, make sure chaos resistance is okay. I should get mine up a little bit more, but I still have this flask, and if I pop this flask, I'll have enough, so I can keep this up pretty much most of the time. The ideal goal is to make sure that you are able to at least have most of your resistances uh, maxed out, and then some, just in case you want to do some of the maps that have negative. Um, there's also a lot of times where uh, monsters will deal extra damage as another type of damage source as a map modifier, and then when there's alley weakness, that's like sometimes you just get one-shotted. So watch out for those kinds of things too, and it just really comes down to increasing your life. So um, in terms of like our gems, I'll Go, I'll mouse over them just because uh, I want to give you guys that info. Uh, if anything has maybe like swapped out, this is just the same precision. Hydrosphere was just the thing that you saw. Uh, we got Ancestral Warchief, that's old. Dreadbanner, I believe, is old as well. 
Flesh and Stone. Uh, this is actually something new. Okay, so what Flesh and Stone does, uh, I'm running the Stone Stance. This is a skill where you can activate uh, again, and it'll, it'll swap to like uh, the uh, other stance, which will make enemies take more physical damage, which is still good for a build, but I want this, which makes enemies blind um, when we're in Sand Stance, and that means they have a 50% chance to uh, miss the target, so it's pretty good for survivability. Um, it just really comes down to, do you have the mana to reserve? If you don't have the mana to reserve and you feel like you're dying, definitely Flesh and Stone will help out a lot, especially if you can blind the enemies. You can remove something else if you want to. You can check the DPS sheet, but it's not always going to be the most accurate. Um, you can also think about, maybe now you want to install Path of Building out. Again, I'll probably make dedicated videos on like Loot Filter, Path of Building, things that would be like, that you have to download that are outside of the game, but this game just has so much to it. It's just going to be uh, like that. But uh, anyways, uh, moving on to um, other things that I want to show off. I had so many things that I, I want to show off, but I, I, I don't want to make this video super, super, super long, but I do definitely need to show you guys so many mechanics here. So um, I will show you guys off the final lab, but in addition to that, if you get certain things, some of the things will say that it'll like change the map. You can throw these inside like a, a map when you do them. And it will, let's see if you just like throw in like a, a map over here. I'm not going to do the map, but I'm just going to show you. If you throw these in, you can still activate these on the map and it will give you whatever bonus that it gives you. There's also these things called sextants on watchstones and this is kind of a complex mechanic. <laughs> and this is where some people get really like overwhelmed and don't worry if you do. It's totally fine. So if I wanted to uh, throw this sextant on a watchstone i would go ahead and roll it on and put it on that and it would modify it so you can see where it says 50 percent increased durations of shrine effects on players areas contain additional resonating shrine as three uses remaining so if i was to use this because this now has that modifier i can still move it wherever i want but it will give me that bonus usually they're always like it'll add more monsters it generally doesn't make it m I mean, technically, if there's more monsters, it kind of makes it difficult. But, like, it's not going to be generally as difficult as, let's say, like, a map modifier. Like, if I was to get this map modifier or this map over here in, like, Alka and say, like, they do, uh, where is it? Uh, extra. This is just more defensive stats. There's fire additional projectiles so that could be like more damage essentially, uh, you know, that could potentially be coming in and uh, my way. But there's also these things where we can capture the souls on the Pantheon, which um, I, I kind of want to reserve for another video. But basically, it, you guys will see where it says like capture queen of. If you look up, if you just like Google capture queen of great tangle it'll tell you what map that you need and you will need a vessel and what you're going to do with the map device this is for people that are interested in doing this and again i will show you all of this but i'm just going to mention it really quick in this video you put in the map and then you throw in the little like uh vessel and what's going to happen is you once you kill the boss you will take that uh to sin and he will then grant you the bonus that would be like the other thing that's um right below where it says capture queen of the great uh tangle it'll say 50 percent increased recovery of life and energy shield if you stop taking damage over time recently like you'll get all those bonuses and you'll have to do most of these are on a little bit harder of maps but um that is how you would capture the the souls of other things later down the line um there's also the chisels that will improve the quality of the map you know what we should probably do a dedicated video for all of these <laughs> currencies but again i'm trying not to make this video super long and overwhelming but again definitely if you get confused on any things that I'm talking about, uh, let me know down below. But now what I want to show you guys is uh, two different things. I want to show you the harvest mechanic as it's going to be important. I'll show you guys the alien text that you will unveil so you can actually uh, craft certain things. Like this item, like this item, I have no space to modify, but like maybe this item we can modify. It has to do with the alien text. So I'm going to show you guys that. And then I want to show you guys like what like as you're progressing in the maps, what like one of the trials will look like because you need to do your final ascendancy. This is something important, and this is about a good time to probably show that off as I've already unlocked it. But I'm going to show you guys that. But there's just so much to show off in Path of Exile. Like it, it's insane, and I again don't worry if it feels overwhelming. Um, it is definitely something that. Uh, can be it feels like it but i promise you this game this game is super fun and it is 100 worth it um next up though 
uh, your divination cards. If you collected enough of these little cards, and um, keep in mind some, like this is two out of three, but if I put it over, it'll be blue. Um, so I have the stash tab that lets me show that off. Like for example, if I go to a stash, I can just go to the cards and it'll show me which ones I have that are maxed out. This is something that does cost money, like real money um, that you will have to purchase if you want it. It's just for like organization and convenience. But like once you get all of them, it'll be in a blue stack. You can go to uh, the NPC in Oriath. Uh, her name is Navali. I just, I just sent her back over here, but this is where you would go to. Uh, you just click on her and you go to trade divination cards. You put it in and then you hit trade and she will give you whatever it says on the divination card. Sometimes these are random and this is a, for, uh, a form of like RNG. Uh, if you really want to min max and go for some big boy plays, there are people that like to heavily gamble in this. Um, so some of the items like these ones, um are more what i would say like there's nothing right here that's like weird where it says like you can get a random item so for example if i was to say let's go to own um this is emperor's luck so it gives you five times of something it's called currency so it'll give you five of something in here what is it well i don't know usually it's not going to be something good i'll tell you that's for sure but there's also uh ones that will grant you really good stuff um and there's like you can even get shards to um build up but there's a lot of these currencies and feel free to experiment with some of them except for this one do not experiment with this you'll probably uh, waste it <laughs> sell this for lots of chaos then use the chaos to buy stuff better gear you know you get whatever you know potions that you want i'm actually gonna swap this out for a jade flask all right another important thing actually this is important <laughs> i have to i have to include this in before i show you guys like the, the the lab and other mechanics this must be shown off so what you need um like i said resistances are good like that's like a no-brainer right Things that you need. Uh, I'm gonna get this jade flask right here. Um, so I'm gonna actually, actually, I need this right now. Um, so I'm gonna grab a jade flask over here, and I'm going to roll it until I can get remove curse. So, um, yeah, okay, okay. So these are the important ones that you need. So you definitely need to have a life flask. Um, you might want to upgrade your life flask depending on what type it is. Um, there are life flasks that will heal you for more, but um, instead of it being like a longer duration, I like the ones that are increase the duration just because of like the rage bleed mechanic and uh, also uh, blood rage. Um, but this one type of heals for more, it's just over a longer period of time. But you can get whatever flask that you want. I just prefer this one. Anyways, um, things that you want to get on that you should have like automatically. You need something that removes bleed. We've already talked about this. And then there's also, um, you need to have removes freeze and chill because there's some monsters that will hit you, you get frozen, it's unfortunate, strong boxes, there's just, you need something to remove uh, freeze and chill. Um, you'll be immune to stun with this build if you're following it because you, once you have 25 rage, you're immune to stun. Now, it doesn't have to be on the Jade Flax. It doesn't matter where these things are, you just need them. I, I actually just really like to have bleed on specifically my life flask though that is one that's like one exception that i will recommend for you guys now what i'm going to do is change this to a magic item and i'm just going to keep on rolling oh, i had bleed on it okay what i want to do specifically on this is get immunity to curses so i'm just going to roll this uh, until i get uh curses or if it rolls like really good um what i can like if it rolls like freeze and chill immunity i can just um swap this one out and Go to the other one so this one has increased duration uh that's that's like okay as well because i just you know it's more damage whatever um increased attack speed ideally like the only thing i need to do is remove uh curses poison is not really that big deal. okay there we go so we have immune to curses during flask effect and it also uh grants us increased duration hey that's good this allows us to do maps that would have curses one thing to keep in mind though is like a lot of times you can keep up your flask when you're killing like the trash monsters over and over again however it is a lot more difficult to maintain these up on the bosses if you're not able to usually you, you can put most of the flasks in the game will let you pop it like two to three times on the boss if you're not killing the boss at that fast sometimes it might be better either to a not do those maps two you need more damage so consider that also um but it's okay on like very specific uh you know boss fights that don't have like the curse or whatever and if you're not really having that much trouble don't worry about it too much if you can't keep your flask up but if you're really having trouble on your damage think about adding more flat physical damage um with this build as it's going to be scaling physical heavily as when you're a berserker you have a massive amount of increase once you get those rage charges built up as we get to have um remember we're, in, we're right now i'm at 90 rage 
um, but I can increase it by another five with a, a jewel, and I can also increase it by another five by getting the hatchet master here. So I can get to like a hundred, but to make the math simple, let's just use a hundred. If I have 100 rage and I'm getting triple benefit from it and, you know, I'm getting... 1% uh, attack damage per 1 rage, but it tripled the benefits uh, with a right of ruin. Uh, that's a massive 300% uh, amount of extra attack damage uh, once I'm maxed out. If I was just to use that simple math, obviously it would be uh, 280 right now since we're at 90, but again, that's uh, something to consider as well. Um, but if you feel like you know your, your damage is really high, you can, you can get uh, Pain Reaver if you want to. Um, but there's also Warbringer, which will grant you uh, Rage per power if you have less than a certain amount. And you can also sacrifice 10 Rage if you have at least 25, um, which can be kind of eh. But then there's also Exerted Attacks deal 50% more damage if a Warcry sacrificed Rage recently. So what this would be if I hold... Oh, this doesn't even let me. Uh, Exerted Attacks, I believe, is double damage. And uh, speaking of double, Paradoxia is double damage too, but that's, that's something for another topic. And this video is already going to be like an hour long. <laughs> And I'm sorry that there's so much in this game, but there, I, I have to show you guys this thing, otherwise you'd be lost, right? Um, but anyways, chisels can improve the quality of the map. Um, I wouldn't really recommend messing around with these, uh, especially earlier on if you don't know what you're doing. I should try them for chaos. Um, that's what I recommend. Um, I already went over uh, sextants. There's, uh, there's basically like common, rare, and then like more rare ones, and there's even more rare ones later down the line. But uh, most of the currency in this game at this point, um, I have shown off a lot of them, except for the Orb of Annulment. This is really used for crafting, which I'll dip into later. It has to do with something called the Explody Chest, which uh, is something that's really, really good, but we're not gonna cover it like right now. Um, but things that are, definitely check out the prices of some of these things and what they do. So Blessed Orb over here, if I hold Alt on, let's say this Ming's Heart, it gives us uh, 9 to 13 chaos resistance. This one rolled 12. If I use a blessed orb, it will re-roll specifically that implicit. The divine orb, however, will re-roll everything. So this um, uh, 40 to 50 chaos res, that 10 to 5 reduced maximum life, reduced maximum energy shield, all of those are the ones that divine orb will re-roll. Divine orbs are way more expensive. Blessed orbs are really cheap. Um, another thing that's important is the orbs of horizon. I wouldn't really recommend using this on the smaller tier maps. I would recommend using these on the red maps. Um, you can use them kind of to get other things, but if you just want to complete your atlas, and again, you, the whole point is to get all of these maps done. Like you want all of these completed. Um, and um, if you don't know which ones you haven't completed, you can just open up the map and tactically the watch zones. If you add or remove them, there will be certain ones that don't appear. <laughs> I know it's kind of scary, but if you want to know which ones you haven't done, a lot of them will probably be these unique ones, which they're harder to drop. You can buy these off players as well. But you can see this one. I still haven't done this tier three courtyard map. I need to do it. Uh, do all of your maps. That's the most important thing. But specifically, once you get to the red little maps, if you want to roll them, let's say, for example, like this one over here, uh, I, I, I have done this one already, right? I can hold all, it'll say complete. Don't worry about the awakening objective. That's something you don't really need to worry about. But like in this tier, as in the tier 12 maps, if there's another one that I have not done, like I can check this because I have this map stash tab, but if you don't have it, you're going to have to use the map. It's the only other way to really show it off. But um, what you would do is you would use this orb of horizon and it will re-roll it to another map. So this one over here, it's corrupted, so I can't roll it. But this one, since I've done it already, uh, I can use an orb of horizon. I got another map. Uh, I haven't done this one, perfect. Now it has temporal chains. I don't like messing around temporal chains. So I probably would just go ahead and chaos orb, re-roll these maps. And this is an important thing because I haven't really talked about this. If it has a map modifier, reflect uh, ele elemental damage, physical damage, I can't do. If it's cursed with temporal change, uh, vulnerability, I, I usually don't like doing those ones. Uh, temporal trons makes it go super slow. But remember, I got that flask and I just rolled it and I have immunity curses. So I can kind of try to do those. So sometimes with these map modifiers, like I'm not really relying on any dodge. Remember dodge and evade are two different things. Um, like right now my dodge chance is considered unlucky if I was to do this map. If I go to defense, um, I check my um, dodge. I don't even think I have any dodge. So, like, dodge chance, like, being less effective absolutely doesn't bother me at all. So, there are certain times where, like, players will be cursed with this, 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 but if you're, like, immune to curses, it doesn't matter. There's actually a ring that lets you be immune to curse. Well, it, it reduces the effectiveness, and you can actually reduce the effectiveness so low that you can get, like, reverse effects, but that's top for another day. But anyways, more gameplay coming up very soon. So, like I said, I want to show you guys 
on this part, we're going to be doing the harvest mechanic, um, which is a, a, a league mechanic that you will want. Like this one, I think everyone should do it. Like I mentioned before, there's a lot of mechanics that you don't have to do. Speaking of that, this I have to show you in this video too. It's important. So if I as it. If I'm throwing in these maps, if I want to do Einhar mechanics, I can do that. If I want to do the little like temple mechanic, which I, I don't bother with Einhar, uh, the temple, Nico is okay, which is the soul fight one, and then the immortal syndicate, which is the alien text, it can be worth it. I usually don't like messing with it. But Zana 100% is worth doing. What happens with the Zana is you will find this lady, you probably have already seen her before and sometimes when you do maps, but she will let you do another map in a map that you can complete and it will complete on the atlas. So that is very important. And when she gives you a bunch of maps, make sure you hold alt over them and then you can read which ones that you have and haven't done. So that'd be a really excellent thing to mention here. But yeah, make sure you do all the Zana ones. And if you're running out of maps, you can buy them through players, but they usually don't respond, especially with maps that are very low in the price range. If they're a high, if expensive map, people would respond, but low maps, it's frustrating when you're trying to buy a map and you would just go to the Wee trade website, type in the exact map where it's like coral ruins um, or like siege map, right? And then you'd, you'd read the tier, whatever, you, whatever one you wanna buy. Make sure you also check Zana. Sometimes she has, sometimes she will have things that you can profit off of, so do that. If I hold Alt, you can see which ones I have and haven't completed. Always check her, like, uh, you know, once in a while. This one over here, complete, 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 complete. This one, not completed, I'm gonna buy it. Some of these are kind of expensive to do. Um, this one over here, not completed, I'm gonna pick up this one too. So do that with Zana, it's definitely worth it. And this one, you can see area is influenced by the shaper, so it will mod uh, be modified. Now, uh, I'm not a fan of reflect Ellie damage as I straight up cannot do it. Uh, I will basically destroy myself <laughs> if I do that. So again, feel free to roll your maps. There's two different ways to uh, roll maps to be easy. You can just chaos orbit, or you can use your scouring to make it a white map. Like for example, if I didn't want to do this one, bam, makes it white, then throw it orb alchemy. Um, if you're if you're kind of poor and you don't have a lot of chaos orbs, you can scour. If you got scouring orbs, these are here. I want to move this here so you can see it. If you want to do it this way, you can do it that way, or you can just chaos orb it. Depending on like the the times, certain times things might be worth more than others. Do what you want to do, but that's like a brief explanation of it. But anyways, yeah, let's show off the uh, harvest mechanic, and then we've got the uh, the lab trial that I'll, I'll just show you guys one trial, and then I will show you guys the Uber Lab. And I, I've already done it at this point, but again, it's important, and I just wanted to cover all these other bases before showing you guys the lab because it, depending on your playthrough and your luck you might not have seen these maps and stuff like that but i want to show you guys the maven mechanic anyways let's go important thing with the ritual rewards which i haven't shown off you can re-roll over here for a set amount of currency it's always two thousand you can only roll once though but another thing that is great to pick up are these things where it has this alien text that's something that is veiled and you can use these to actually learn things for crafting. So if I was to, let's say, grab this, you see how it has a little like alien text. If we go back in, what we can do, since this is on a map, I'll have to go basically out twice. But we will go talk to June. Now, she might not be in your hideout. So if you don't see her here, you can just go to Oriath and um, you can invite her to your hideout just like all the other um, NPCs in the game. Well, most of them, you can just do this. So. We will talk to her and we will unveil the item, which will unlock some uh, stuff later down the line. So we'll have to find out where she's at. Uh, let's see. He's June. Okay, there she, there she is. So we'll unveil item, but normally you can tell her, come to my hideout or whatever, something like that. So what we'll do is we will unveil the item. We will put it on in here and my face isn't blocking it. Okay. So if I unveil the item. You'll see that there's multiple different roles. If I wanted, let's say, um, fire damage or whatever like I want to be able to like learn uh, is what I would try to get on it. And this is since there's really nothing that I'm really in, like looking forward to, but unveiling the items will eventually let you learn some of these uh, as uh, crafting with your crafting bench. Now, I already have my crafting bench placed, but you might have to place it, which would be over here and you go to edit or what is it? Um, it should be one of these, let's see. It's not decor, is it decorations? Utility, uh, here we go. It's called artesian bench? A crafting bench, so you'll be able to click on it and then you place it anywhere. You can see I can place it right there. And then we're done. If I wanna put, put it over here, we can put it over here. And then if I wanna craft something, corrupted items, remember, cannot be crafted on, but let's say I wanted to like craft something like this, I could uh, craft onto it. Now it will cost you 
depending on the tier of whatever the upgrade is, it'll cost you more and it will replace whatever it tells you that it will replace. Usually you can see what it says prefix, there's the suffix. If I hold alt, it'll tell you um, kind of what area it, it's going to be at. Um, it's, it, there's a lot more to crafting, but this is like just the basics of it. It's again, uh, unveiling the item is uh, something that uh, is really great for you to use. Um, but I'm just gonna grab this and I'm just gonna go sell it. So we'll do that real quick, as I don't really need those items. But in addition to that, another important thing to go ahead and actually do, uh, now that we've mentioned the mechanic of unveiling items, as if there's nothing to grab with the um, ritual mechanic, like there's nothing that you want to purchase with the uh, points, uh, I, that's what I would recommend. In this instance over here, I'm just going to grab the extra light forms of currency, like I'll grab the chromatics, I'll grab the jeweler's orbs. Um, but yeah, keep in mind that you do definitely want to unveil items because you might want to build another character later down the line. And especially since this guy is for usually for people that are just starting out, it's good just to start unveiling like everything in the entire game. Um, but in addition to that, we're going to actually show off another mechanic that is... Uh, pretty important and we're gonna go into the sacred grove so as far as the alien text goes it's just kind of random you can also pick up items it's for the betrayal league but you can also just get items sometimes that will have that that you will unveil it's usually again with the betrayal mechanic so this mechanic is almost something i should almost reserve for another video too uh, but again I'll, I'll briefly explain this mechanic so this is harvest it is the best league mechanic ever and uh it is super 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 strong so what you'll do is when you go into these areas you will see that there's all these different uh little seeds and they're all planted normally you'd have to plant these seeds and then you'd have to basically grow them and it's not very fun to be honest uh for me personally but with this league, they've made it so you just walk in and they're, they're already ready to go and you can actually save some of these modifiers. So this one over here, um, it, it has all these modifiers. So there's 10 times of like whatever, it's it's the primal uh, dust spitter. So it says reveals a random lightning modifier crafting when harvested so you can uh, you know learn some certain things. So pick the one that you want. Um, for this one over here, I'm really looking for trying to link uh, sockets. So I'm just gonna look all over for that. Um, and see uh, which one we can get. Uh, when you open it up, there will be monsters that will come out. So this is um, currency, uh, changes the socket color. So there's a lot of modifiers and it's a really cheap way for you guys to get some of these maps that would let's say be um, like just a white map over here. And I, I don't mean white, like the color of the map, like on the little like symbol, but I mean like the, um, like the text of it. it's not a magic it's just a, a normal there's normal you know uh then we can make it blue and it'll add more modifiers and rare uh we'll add more modifiers but it'll make it more difficult it's a really easy way to get modifiers without using your orbs of alchemy so it can save you a lot of currency by doing these so um this one gives us a random currency crafting effect this one could be okay um that's currently that's the one i'm i'm gonna do either one of those ones um unless i see specifically what i want which again is going to be the one that changes now make sure you guys check out all the areas sometimes there'll be one in like the hidden um uh yeah it's just socket number okay so for this one i'm just gonna do the one where we can uh, to have the currency change and also lets us sacrifice a map to uh, create items in the atlas. Let's just go ahead and just do this one. So we'll set up over here. Ooh, sometimes it'll be a little bit laggy, but that's okay. We'll melt them. Sometimes it can be dangerous for melee builds to start off just right in the middle. This is a lower tier map, so it's totally fine. But what I can recommend for some players, um, is starting off at like the side of it so that you're not just going right in okay so important part you can actually ask access your stash tab while doing this so you'll see exactly what it uh, grants us i want to see what the uh the currency one is uh, let's see sacrifice a map it can change something or forges the color of two random sockets of an item uh turning them red and blue so if you're really trying to get a specific thing this is like the best thing because it's so free like it just you just kill it and then it's basically free currency um, your forge number is an item 10 times. Okay, this is exactly what I want. Wait, oh, this is the number of sockets on the item. Um, 
Let me see if I actually have anything. It's, it's great. You can actually walk back. There's actually a button you can click for your stash. But if I see anything that like I would want to have six sockets, I'm just going to select this one just because it's like it's kind of exciting sometimes. Uh, okay, like let's throw this item over here. So if I just click on the item in my stash, it'll just pop up right here. This is not a good item. I just want to do this one because it's the most entertaining. So it's going to basically use a jeweler's orb 10 times on this item. Normally you'd want to quality the item up before doing this, but I'm just doing this to show you guys. We got a five. Wow, cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, next up, we can reforge a rare item. So you can also do stuff from your inventory here. And I'm just going to put this one in just to show you an example, because this is what I like to use these for. You can also save it. Like if you see that there's a, I mean, if I select it, there's this button right here that says uh, Horty Crafting Station Full. I've already saved. You can only save so many of these and you can use them at any time when you just go over to this little like thing, which kind of looks like a little hook. And I can just start using whatever I want. Like I want to save it for later. You can see I've saved a bunch of normal to magic modifiers. Uh, over here and again I just use this as basically free versions of um, Orbs of Alchemy and I think that that's like a good good way for most beginners to always profit off of this if that makes any sense. So this one will always have a physical modifier it might be like uh, this one is 30% more monster physical damage reduction it's just something. Um, I don't think do we need to even do any of these maps. Um, ideally you want to try to do it on maps that you have not rolled or if there's something that I can't do for example like if I was playing a, a build that has to stun to do something right if monsters can't be stunned I can't do this map I put it in here I re-roll it um, in this instance there's not really anything else that I want to do um, but you can sometimes you can do more than one uh, in the harvest uh, like you, you you pick which ones that you want to do you can't do like every single one of them otherwise yeah, that'd be pretty good um, there's specifically a physical one that's really important. It's going to be for way later in the video, but basically, or in, the, in our little series. But pretty much what you can do is get something called an explodey chest, and this is like a really cheap, easy way to do it. The explodey chest makes it so you can clear content way faster, but that's going to be for way later on as uh, you're going to have to get an item quality it up, and it's it's a long process, but that's the basics of it. And this, these are randomly spawning in. Uh, while we do the maps, but it is part of our like, you know playthrough session here So I'll go ahead and show you guys um, At least one of these to, to solve remember that you have to solve multiple of these It's not just like one trial these ones are very very hard This is, this is, this is literally the last ones that we will be doing so yes, they will be very difficult Some of these the switches by the way do nothing some of them that you will have to hit oh we are actually low on HP I recommend actually getting a stone golem to do these so you can take some damage in between. This one is just like walk. These ones I will kind of take a little bit slower. Actually, I just leveled up, so it's not that bad if we die. But the reason why is once we get a certain level in this game, we really don't want to die. I mean, you don't ever really want to die in a game anyways, but I'm going to go ahead and hit this. Ooh, okay. But yeah, these ones are very, very long. So if you die, you have to do it all over again. We should go to channel 820, by the way. This is like a, a good thing. This is a good... Uh, whoops, hold on. Eliminate these guys out of the way. And we go to uh, global. Um, we go to 820 is the number. Oh, it, it's full. Dang, unlucky. Um, do I have a port for that? Oh, I can, I can give you this if you want it. And one of my friends wants the, uh, oops, the, the, the portal to this area. Uh, and I will open it up right after we complete it. I don't believe you can do this. Yeah, you, you can't open up a portal at the, I don't think you can open it up. Okay, we'll get to the end. I don't know if you can do this anymore. I think I'll ha what I'll have to do, and if you want to be awesome, okay, well, this is what we use. This is our currency that we use to go in, but let me see if I can put it up now. Oh, and it doesn't let you do it. So what I'll do is I will put up a portal. Now my friend can enter it, and he can do the uh, lab uh, himself. 
All right, so you're gonna have to do several of these trials to go ahead and get to the ability to do the final Uber Lab, which I plan to actually show you guys in the next video because it's just gonna make this video way longer than necessary, uh, I think. But anyways, the first important step over here, I'm gonna show you guys how to join the channel 820. So what you have to do is you right click where it would say global, and then it should say global and then I'll have a number. Type in 820 and hit enter. The reason why is because this channel has a lot of people doing a bunch of team play uh, with specifically doing the uh, trials of ascendancy. So you guys can see over here, it says have piercing truth tips, please last call. So what you can do is you would right click over here, whisper the player and say, hey, please send me an invite. They'll invite you, you go in and it'll basically be the trial. Now keep in mind, you can do these trials normally by just going ahead and completing maps, but it's just a lot faster to go ahead and do it this way. But I also wanna give you guys a uh, little last tip over here before we finish off this uh, video here. The most important thing with your PoE build before you uh, do the last trial is basically just leveling up, getting as much health as possible. I'm also gonna exit the chat right here so it stops uh, spamming. You can just click where it would say global and then I'll get rid of the uh, the chat for the, the global chat. It's optional, but again, um, since there's so many different regions on the Atlas as far as like where those uh, trials will spawn, it's just faster again to do it that way. But another thing I wanted to mention uh, is if you feel like you're unable to survive, um, there's an actual really cheap item called Kaom's Heart that will only sell for about like 15 chaos. Um, so if you feel like you're dying too fast or if you happen to have a six socket weapon, um, I personally wouldn't mind using this item once I get my weapon to six links um, over here. But uh, if you happen to have just a five link weapon, which you can buy for relatively cheap still, um, you could also consider running this as it gives you a huge boost to life. Um, but yeah, it's just Caleb's Heart. You can search it via the trade website. You can also get divination cards that will let you just get this item, but it's a relatively uh, inexpensive item for the amount of uh, life that it does add. Even though it says there's only 500 life, that scales with anything that will have life percent. So if I go ahead and equip this on uh, my character right now, you can see we almost have 7,000 life, even though it just says 500, because again, it's scaling much better. But there's a lot more stuff that we do have to cover, but I'll reserve that for the next video. So this one isn't super, super long, but anyways, Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you enjoyed it, drop a like on it, and I will see you on the next part of our PoE playthrough. I'm signing out. Peace.